But still my soul is heaven bound Coming for to carry me on Swing low, sweet chariot Coming for to carry me on Swing low, sweet chariot Coming for to carry me on Swing low, sweet cheddaria, coming for to carry me home. Well, I looked over Jordan, and what did I see? Coming for to carry me home. A band of angels coming after me. Woo! Coming for to carry me home. Bam! I don't know where that came from. I just felt it in my bones. Felt it down in my bones. Mm. Well, worship team, you're dismissed. God bless you. Children's Church, you're dismissed as well. God bless you. God go with you. Lacey, that was you. You're out of here. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Well, it's been one of those kind of mornings. She, was, she didn't even see that. That's why I waited until she left. Because I'd be in trouble. You know what? Have you ever been in a place where you couldn't see your hand in front of your face? Think about that for just a minute. Can't, can't see, I mean, you can't, I've, I've been in, in the dark before where you can't even see your hand in front of your face. You know it's there. Work with me. You know it's there, but you can't see it. You know how you know it's there? Because you can feel it. Hello? Yep. I want to talk to, to you this morning. I, I got up early. In fact, I, there hadn't been a day this week that I haven't had to get up early. But that's okay because I get up early when I don't even have a clock set. I just get up early because I'm used to getting up early. And I was thinking this morning, actually I was, it actually started yesterday up in the mountains, hiking around. And, uh, and I thought, you know, there's more to this hunting than just hunting. Because when I'm hunting, I, I found out yesterday, I just found that I find myself just praying. Not necessarily praying God give us the quarry, but just praying. I mean, you're out there and you're in the middle of God's creation. You're, and and, and I'm, I am every day, but, but listen, I mean, there's something about it. And, and I want to talk, as the Lord began to just speak to me uh, yesterday about just our, our prayer life, Tammy talked about, there are things in this world that we're afraid of that we have no reason to be afraid of. The success rate for this worldwide pandemic is like 99 point whatever percent i mean I, it's very survivable but if you listen if you if you listen closely you'll be so scared you know, I'm, you know, I know you watch and you see people and i'm not judging anybody but i'll tell you they've bought into this idea that Unless I wear a mask, I'm going to die. <laughs> or you're closer than six feet. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die. You see people in... Listen, we have pretty fresh air around here. You see people walking down the street with a mask on. 
doing all kinds. I mean, and, and that's okay if that's what they want to do. But don't, don't let fear, as Tammy was talking about, don't let fear motivate you. Don't let fear control your life. Listen, I looked over Jordan and what did I see? Coming for to carry me home. A band of angels coming after me. When's the last time you looked that far ahead? When's the last time you looked farther down the road than your next meal? <laughs> I don't know why I just got stuck on Mark right there for a second. I was like, <laughs> Mark's like, excuse me, I got to go to the house. <laughs> I love that guy. When's the last time you looked further down the road than you can see? My message title this morning is Long-Term Outlook. I was sitting there and I was thinking about this ministry. And I was thinking about what the Lord is doing here in this ministry. And I was thinking about, and I was began trying to do some math to figure out uh, how long Tammy and I have been a part of this congregation. And, and uh, um, you know, I think it was back in like 2015 or 2013 when we were still up on the hill on Leon Street. I don't know what what the dates were or any of that kind of stuff. Maybe you do. Maybe you can do the math better than I. But I, I come to this conclusion that at, at least we've been around in here for seven years, at least. And I thought, man, seven years, that, uh, uh, the Lord's done some good stuff in that amount of time. Uh, it, the Lord has done some good stuff. I'm not saying I've done anything. I just know that the Lord has done some great things in that time. And, and what a time we have had seeing the faithfulness. How many of you realize you're sitting in the, you're sitting tangibly in, in the faithfulness of God? You're sitting in His faithfulness. What are you talking about? I'm talking about by faith, a building was sold on top of the hill over there, and, and, and by faith, God provided another place. So you're sitting in His faithfulness this morning. And as I look out over this congregation and I see people that have grown so much in the things of the Lord, I, I can see people that, that we have led to the Lord. I can see people that I've baptized in, in, this, in this place. And, and, and we can see the tangible evidence of the things that God have done. And can I just tell you, it's nothing to do with me, but I can tell you it's partly because of a long-term outlook. Church, we've got to get to the place where we look beyond the end of our nose. Listen, if you're driving a car and you just stare right off the end of the hood of the car at the road so you know exactly where you're at and you're driving, you'll crash. You'll crash. You know the best place to look? As far as you can see down the road is the best place to look. And if you'll look down there, you'll just drive that. You drive where you look. If you're gawking around a lot, guess what? Just sit there. I didn't get ugly when you were preaching. Just sit. <laughs> I, I might look around a little. But I'm bigger than most everybody out there, so it doesn't. Hallelujah. Look. Yes, yes. But can I, just, can I just say this, that it really is truly an honor? It, it really is truly an honor to be able to serve as your pastors in this place. And to have the honor and the privileges that we've had to baptize you and to dedicate your children and dedicate your grandchildren or even be a part of leading your loved ones to the Lord. So I just want to take time this morning to say thank you. Because let me just put it to you this way. If you wasn't here, neither would I be. And, uh, 
And, and so I just want to say thank you. So having said all of that, I did some research also this morning. And in 1996, the average stay for a pastor in a church was 3.6 years. The national average of a pastor in a pulpit in ministry in the United States was 3.6 years. We've doubled that at least. Today, today the average is, has grown to somewhere around six years. So I'm still ahead of the national average. And I believe personally, I believe personally that the only, the, the way you grow a church is by and large through longevity. Amen. Pastoral longevity, I think, says a lot about the congregation and about the ministry itself. And, and I, I believe this, and I've said this before, that a church alive is worth the drive. Amen? A church alive is worth the drive. People will drive to a place where God is moving. Listen, God's not going to move based on me. I, I shared in our prayer time this morning before we took the platform that if we would, the, the Bible says this, that God said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And so, church, my challenge to you this morning, right at the start of this message, is would you pray and would you begin to lift up the Lord? And as we lift up the Lord, people will begin to come to this place. They won't be able to stop it. Amen. And it's not going to be because of my, 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 my preaching. John, Bob, uh, Billy, it's not going to be because of our great singing and our great worship, although all of that combined is a part of the plan. But God said, listen, if you lift me up, if you would lift me up, I will draw all men. And so, God, we just ask this morning that you, by your Spirit, whether through the, through the camera or through the pulpit today, God, that you would begin as we lift you up, as I exalt you, as you've already, I mean, Tammy's already preached a heck of a sermon. I mean, a fired up sermon. Lord, and our worship, Lord, has been to glorify you and to prepare the hearts of your people for the planting of your word. And Lord, I pray today, I ask you to forgive me for anything, Lord, that would hinder you moving moving through me this morning. God, take a coal from the altar. Touch these lips of clay, Lord. Blow on the ember that's inside of me. God, turn it into an inferno, a fire, Lord, that the, your word would go forth today like a sharp two-edged sword and it would touch lives and people would leave here changed by your word, Lord, and by your spirit, I pray. God, in Jesus' name, and everybody said amen and amen. Listen, we are going to have to have a long-term outlook if we're going to stay effective in the mission that the Lord has given us. Amen? Amen. We have got to have a long-term uh, a, a long outlook. So I want you to turn with me this morning to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, starting in verse 32, but, but, but recall the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great struggle with sufferings. I'm going to let that just sink in for a minute. After you came to the light, is what it's talking about when it says after you were illuminated. Listen, most people think once we get illuminated, once we begin to walk in the light, once we come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior, life is going to be a box of chocolates. Not so much. Because the Bible also says that the godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. That's what it said. 
And he says in another place, listen, because you love me, the world will hate you and persecute you, say all manner of evil against you, all these kinds of things. So listen, church, in the, in the words of my wife, suck it up, buttercup. Can I just tell you, church, that we, we got to suck it up. We got to quit being offended because somebody didn't talk to me this morning. Somebody didn't shake my hand. Somebody didn't. Listen, you want to fr- have friends? Show yourself friendly. You want to be loved? Love other people. <clears throat> I'll get back on this. You endured... A great struggle with suffering, partly while while you were made a spectacle, both by reproaches and tribulations, and partly while you became companions of those who were so treated. For you had compassion on me and my chains, and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and an enduring possession for yourselves in heaven. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. Let me stop and back up just for a moment. For you had compassion on me in my chains, verse 34, and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and an enduring possession for you. Do you understand what that says this morning? That you have a you have a better and an enduring possession. Those things that you have sent on before, those prayers that you have sent on before, those offerings that you have given to the church, those offerings that you have given to missionaries, those tithes that you have paid unto the Lord, you're laying up for yourself treasures in heaven. And you listen, I'll tell you, that's a place where moth can't get in there and, 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 eat, and eat stuff and rust doesn't destroy and, and all, robbers can't get in there and steal. It's laid up for you. He said it is a pos- an enduring possession for yourself in heaven. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great re- reward, for you have need of endurance. You have need of endurance so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Verse 37. Yet for a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just. I think if we read this correctly, it uh, at least the way the author's uh, uh, the translators have pinned this and punctuated it. It says, now the just shall live by faith. I want to change the punctuation on this a little bit this morning if I can. If you just put a comma, just put a little comma right there at the end of the word now. Now. Right now, today, the now, in, in your lifetime, in your moment, in your sphere, in, in this life that you're living, now, today the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. So Hebrews here encourages you and I as believers to persevere in our in our Christian faith and our conduct when we face persecution and pressure. Listen, do you get freaked out when the, when the enemy comes after you? Does it freak you out? Does it bother you? Does it make you want to draw back? You're like, "Oh man, I can't take you can take this." If you'll dress like the dude in the corner over there, Well, he's dressed as good. <laughs> if you'll put on the armor every morning, the reality is, why are you taking it off at night? Amen. That's the real question. But we're encouraged to persevere in our Christian faith. We usually don't think of suffering as good for us, but it can, in fact, build our character and our patience. 
So during times of great stress, we may feel God's presence more clearly and find help from Christians that we never thought would even care. So knowing that Jesus is with us in our suffering and that he will in fact one day return to put an end to all the pain helps us grow in our faith and our relationship with him. You know how you get strong in faith? You start taking steps of faith. Faith's like a muscle. If you don't use your muscles, they will do, they will, they will, they will begin to, in medical terms, atrophy. My terminology and yours, they'll just sag. Amen? They won't be no good for nothing. They won't be any good for anything, but you, if, you will, if you will use them, if, you will, if you'll exercise your faith, if you'll exercise your... I mean, a fat guy's telling you all this. Just thought of that. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. So, so when we know that he's with us in our suffering... So you got to know, number one, you've got, if you're saved, you got to know that he's with you, right? If you don't know that he's with you, you might not be saved. In fact, you're probably not saved. Because I know that I know that I know in whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he's able to keep me against that day. What day? This day we're talking about. The day of fear. The day of, of stress. The gray of, day of great stress. The time of our suffering. And that I, I believe with all my heart that one day he, he is coming. Listen, how many of you have to come to the place where you realize that the sin that you find yourself getting into, the trouble you find yourself getting into, the trials you find yourself having to walk through, the enemy would say because of those things, you're disqualified qualified from being a child of God. How many of you have ever besides the pastor experienced that very thing? You're just screwing up too often. God's done with you. He don't even like you anymore. Let me tell you something. I'll tell you what's going on. You're still a part of the family of God, but what the enemy is trying to do is he's trying to convince you that you are worth less and that God doesn't love you. And if, you, if he can convince you of that, if he can just get you to sit down and shut up, You'll not be effective. How long has she been standing over here in the corner? Whoa. Not saying nothing. But finally when she has a belly full of it, when she's had it up to here, I know this. I know this. <laughs> Anybody want to take me home after church? <laughs> Listen, you, you can tell that something was happening. Because there comes a point, and, and I deal with, it seems like on a weekly basis, I go through this, stuff happens, I have thoughts that I want to, bad thoughts, you know, just you're dealing with people in the world. and Somebody help me preach here. And the enemy will say, who are you to think that God would ever, you, you, you should, you're just, you are disqualified. He's a liar. Amen. The truth is not in him. He's the father of all lies. And so I stand before you this morning again saying, God, forgive me, allow me to be used by you. You know why? Because I know that there's suffering in this place, and I know that the enemy wants me to shut up. He doesn't want for this church to have longevity. This church has been through I don't know how many sets of hands. A few. I don't know if you've known this about me or not, but I'm... There are, there are some things about me that I'm stubborn. It's hard to believe, I know. It's hard to believe, but I'm stubborn. I, I do have a little bit of a Missouri mule in me, I think. 
because I'm a little stubborn. But along with that comes this, this idea of tenacity. Tenacity speaks of, uh, to describe tenacity, it's like giving a pit bull a T-bone steak and then trying to take it away from him. You better be tenacious if you want the steak. I want to be tenacious about the things of God. And so we know that Jesus is with us in our suffering and he will return one day and he's going to put an end to all the nonsense and, and, and help us to grow in our faith and our relationship with him. Let me, ta- let me turn your attention this morning to Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through 5. And not only that, So something really good was just said, and now he's saying, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulations. How many of you are like, yeah, that's me. I just love it so much. (laughs) I just glory in tribulations. I just love the fight so much. I love when everything just going crazy. There's none of us are signing up for that because we, in our flesh, do not glory in trials and tribulation. We're like, why me, Lord? Come on, somebody be honest right now and say, that's me. Why me, Lord? I'll tell you why you, because you've been called. Just like she said, you've been a called, you've been appointed for such a time as this. You have a purpose in your life, and God wants you to be used in your purpose. God wants to use you in what he has designed you and I to do. That's why I keep getting in this pulpit Sunday after Sunday, because I know God has a plan. No, he's not done with me. No, I'm not perfect. Yes, I have the, 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 uh, the what? The potential, that's not really the word I was looking for. There's a fancy word I was going to throw on you right there, but the Lord's like, no, that ain't you. (laughs) The propensity, is that a good word? Propensity, I have a propensity to mess up. The potential is there. Thank you, brother. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you very much for pointing that out. Not only that, but we glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. You know what perseverance is? Perseverance means that you're going to go through some more tribulation. That's what that means. So we're just glory. We're so excited about the whole thing. It's great. (laughs) Woo! Well, I looked over Jordan and what? Did I see coming for to carry me home? Knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character. Character. You know what character is? Character is what you're made of. Character is what will carry you through the perseverance. Character is knowing I have Christ in me, the hope of glory. Amen. And character produces hope. I have a hope in Christ Jesus. And, 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 and verse 5 goes on to say, and hope does not disappoint. Because the love of God has been just sprinkled on you. Just sprinkled. Just, oh, you know, like the old, the old, I'll date some of you and myself as well. Like Dippity do. Yeah. Huh? Oh, the ladies are like, oh, that's some good stuff. <laughs> Dippity do. You know what their commercial was? A little dab will do you. Uh-huh. A little dab will do you. Man, you come out of that place looking like you combed your hair with a pork chop, man. I mean, <laughs> That's not what it says. It says, now hope does not disappoint because the love of God, I love this, has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. It has been poured out. 
In, in Psalms, it, it says in Psalm 23, my cup runneth over. It's not like, well, I just filled it up until it just began to splash over. No, it's a picture of it just being poured on and the container can't contain it anymore and it's just running over and it's running this way and running that way and running everywhere and people walk by and it gets on. I want that kind of stuff. That's the way the love of God has been poured out in your heart and mind. I'm telling you, church, we rejoice in suffering not because we like the pain, not because we deny there's tragedy, but because we know God is using life's difficulties and the enemy's attack to build your character. Woo! I'll go ahead and say that again because some of you didn't get that. <laughs> Quit looking at your watch or I'm going to have Sharon take it off of you. Hallelujah. <laughs> He's like that pre a daggum preacher. <laughs> we rejoice in suffering not because we like it. None of us like pain. None of us like that kind of stuff. But the reality is God knows what's best for you and I. If we don't have some bumps in the road, if there's not some things that come along that try and knock us off the course, we'll never have tr our, our trust and our hope and our faith put in God, the only one that can get you and I through this mess. He's dealing with some of you in your lives, in areas of your life, and, and you've, you've been fine with it up until now, and now God is beginning to do some things. He's beginning to redo some stuff, change some, rewire or whatever, and now all of a sudden God's revealing things and things are changing and you're, you're having to do different things. Why? Because He's refining you. He's refreshing you. He is helping you to understand that your character is in a process of change. That is one of God's loving purposes to build your character. Our problems will develop perseverance, which in turn will strengthen our character, will deepen our trust in God, and give us greater confidence about the future. I know in whom I have believed and am persuaded that He is able to keep me against that day. See, it's likely that our patience will be tested in some way every day. Hello? Rejoicing begins by thanking God for the opportunities to grow when facing them and relying upon His strength. Paul very well understood the meaning of suffering for the faith. He knew it. He understood it. He was, he was, he's like, remember me in my chains. You remembered me in my chains. All this kind of stuff. How many times was he beaten and shipwrecked and blah, 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 and bit by snakes and all that kind of stuff? You know what he'd do? He'd go right back. He'd go right back to the synagogue, share again, over and over, knowing what would happen. Rejoicing begins by, by thanking God. The key was that Paul learned to rejoice because he knows and he knew that suffering produces perseverance. And persever perseverance is the ability, church, to face difficulties without giving in. You ever want to just throw in the towel? I've had enough. I can't have had it up to here. I can't take it anymore. I, you know what? We've, I, how many times have we said this? God, we've done everything you've asked us to do. We've, we've served you. We've lived for you. We've done this. We've done that. And still all hell's breaking out in my life. I'm just done. I'm just done. You can go ahead and be honest enough to tell God that's exactly how you feel or have felt because he already knows it. Perseverance, the ability to face difficulties without giving in. I might be, what, what the old song says, if you're going through hell, keep on going. The devil might even not even know you were there. If you're going through hell, keep going. You might get through it before the devil even knows you were there. 
Listen, I, I understand that that's very, it's a secular mentality and all that, but listen, I'll tell you what, if, you'll, if you're going through hell, don't set up a tent there. Don't build a cabin. You're not staying. You're just passing through. If you're going through hell, keep going. You might get through before the devil even knows that you were even there. For Christians, suffering... I'm talking to the church. Paul was talking to the church. For Christians, suffering does not negate the reality of God's love. Just because you're going through hell and high water does not mean that God doesn't love you. In fact, it could mean the absolute opposite. That He, in fact, does love you. And He's working something out in your life. He's building you up for something. Because the things that you and I go through, God will use them in your life, in the ministry that God has placed you in, or called you to. It will come around and God will use that very thing that hurt you so badly, caused you so much pain, caused you so so much grief, God will bring somebody across your path at some point in your life and you'll be able to say, let me tell you something. There's nothing ticks me off more than to have somebody say, oh, I, I know exactly what you're going through, brother. They've never been through anything at all like what I'm going through. And I know they haven't. But when that person walks up to you that you know has gone through hell and high water just like you have and he says, listen, I can pray for you, brother. I know what you're going through. I know where you've been and I know God is still in control. All of a sudden you can say, well, I appreciate that. God bless you. I love, thank you for the prayers. It means a lot. Suffering doesn't negate the reality of God's love, but it provides the occasion to affirm and to apply it. This character quality of perseverance or endurance is not an end in itself. It is one step in a process that eventually strengthens your hope and mind. Listen, endurance in turn deepens character. Did I give you that one? Endurance deepens character. If you're climbing a mountain and you stop halfway up, you'll never experience the view from the top. If you're climbing a mountain and your legs begin to burn, your muscles are throbbing. Your lungs are on fire. I can't take another step. Endurance will push you to the top. Because at the top, listen, I, we found some rocks yesterday. And now all I can think about is going to the top of these rocks just to see what's up there. Amen. Because it intrigues me. Something in me that says I got to climb to the very top of this rock just to see what I can see. I'll never know what I can see if I don't come up with the endurance to climb up this very steep hill to get to the top to take. I'll never know. Somebody can go up there and tell me what they saw, but I don't want to know what they saw. I want to see what I can see. Amen. Church, I don't know where that came from. I actually do. We've got as the as the people of, listen to me, as the people of God, we've got to begin to quit living on the views and the, and, the, and the vision of somebody else and begin to get our own look at what God has for us and to begin to walk in that direction. Amen. That was better. Yeah. Endurance deepens character. Listen, uh, um, uh, the word character, the word character, hmm. 
wrapped up in the word character, it includes this idea of being approved as a result of testing. Think about that. You're being approved as a result of testing. So a person with this kind of character is known for his or her inward quality rather than outward appearance. He looks good over there in the corner. He looks good, but you know what? He's hollow. He's just a shell of a man. There's nothing inside. There's nothing in there. It's empty. It's hollow. So there's a progression that begins with suffering and ends with character. When you go through the suffering, when you go through the hardship, when you go through the pain, at the end of it all, there's this thing called character. And it's if you'll allow the pain and the suffering to do what God has allowed it in your life to do, you'll come out on the other side with a renewed sense of character. There will be something that has changed on your inside. Suffering is, is like pressure put on carbon to produce a diamond. I don't know if you know this or not, but I, I, I learned this in my life, uh, uh, that, that, that pearls, pearls are very valuable, they're very valuable, and, and women like them, and they like to wear necklaces made out of pearls, but can I just tell you, pearls are, 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 are the result of an irritation. You ever had anything irritate you in your life? Keep your elbows to yourself. An oyster, an, an oyster gets a little grain of sand in it, and then to and the sand begins to irritate the oyster, and so the oyster squirts this this stuff on it, whatever that stuff is. Um, uh, Oil of pearl, maybe, or something like that. I don't know. I don't know what it's called. But I, but I know this, that it squirts that stuff on there to, to cover up and to smooth up the roughness of the pearl. And it just keeps being an irritant, so it keeps putting it on and keeps putting it on. Pretty quick, you, you know, you have this pearl, and it's very valuable. But it caused that oyster some discomfort. You might be somebody else's pearl, but you right now are, are, are an, an, an irritate to somebody. An irritate. That ain't a good, that ain't a good word. Wow. But there is a, pro, a, a progression. Suffering, I already said that. So as perseverance, as we persevere, we are being formed and molded on the inside. Listen to this. You're being formed and molded on the inside. God is producing His character within us. He's He's producing His character. The end result of this of this chain. Um, uh, a chain reaction is hope. You know what hope is? Hope is this. Hope is confident, confidence that God is in control and will see us through. That's what hope is. That's what hope is. So God's work in us now, conforming us to the likeness of His Son, gives us a glimpse of the wonderful things that He has in store for us in the future. Listen, I don't know if you know this or not, church, but God has some great things in store for us. God has some really great things in store for not only us, but for Myrtle Creek and for Douglas County as a whole because a church alive is worth the drive. So people will begin to drive when God starts doing more than what He's doing and He's doing things now and there are people that are driving to get here. We're going to begin to see it. So, listen, if we maintain our love for Christ and see His work through all of our difficulties, the result's going to be three things. Increased faith, hope, and love. Amen? 
So the difficulties of life are not random. How many of us sometimes we just think it's just random? I didn't even see that coming. Bam, I just got hit with that thing. I didn't even see it coming. It's not random. They're not meaningless. Listen to me. The trials and the tribulations that you and I go through are not meaningless. They're not even wasted when we are trusting in God. Our hope needs to grow and it needs to be developed with the rest of our spiritual being. So rejoicing during suffering will in fact increase our endurance and strengthen our overall character and lead us to more mature hope. So back to our text in Hebrews in verse 35, it says, Therefore do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. So back in the early days of the faith, the believers had, had had great confidence. This great confidence often caused them to experience great hardship. The hardships would not cease, so they, need, they would need to continue to endure. And so the verse implores, do not cast away your confidence. In other words, do not abandon your faith in times of persecution, but show your endurance or by your endurance, that your faith is genuine and sincere. If you give up in the middle of the fight, what have you proved? I go through all kinds of battles, and you know what? Some of them I don't win, but I'll tell you one thing. They know I was at the party. Hello? I might not be able to... To, to, to win every battle, but the enemy's going to know I was there. So, faith means resting in what Christ has done in the past. But it also means this, trusting Him for what He will do in the, in the present and in the future. Remember what my message title is? Anybody remember it? Long-term outlook. Church, we got to look down the road. We got to look down the, t down the road. And for the time being, these believers needed to persevere. They needed to remain steadfast. They needed to bear down to reach the gold and to hold firm. And so because Christ lives in us, we can persevere to the end. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He will make a way, church, where there seems to be no way. Because He lives in us, we can persevere. Endurance grows out of the commitment to Jesus Christ. So Jesus predicted that his followers would be severely persecuted by those who hated what he stood for. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 22, he said this, and you will be hated by, uh, by all because of my name. For the one who in, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. Goes right back to Ephesians chapter 6. Talking about the armor. The armor of God is not in there for defense. It's on there for offense. There's nothing protecting your back. You know why? Because God never asks you to retreat from the battle. You need to endure. You need to persevere. You need to go toward the enemy. Just like David did. He ran to his enemy. You were here on Wednesday night. We had a guest speaker, unannounced, un, un, uh, uninvited, un, un whatever. He just showed up. And the Lord said, let him speak. And I let him speak. He's going to be one of our missionaries. His name's Brent Levy. You know where he's a missionary at? Malta. You know where Malta is? Malta's where Paul was shipwrecked, bit by the snake. We saw a picture of it on, on, the, on, uh, uh, on his card. We have some cards here somewhere. Uh, 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 looks like a terrible place to suffer for Jesus there, I can tell you. Beautiful. Look beautiful. On the whole island of Malta, 500 Christians in the whole island. 
They need Jesus. They need Jesus. And uh, I'm telling you, um, David ran toward the... Every time the giant would come out and start yelling and shouting and blah, 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 what did the army of Israel do? They ran. They ran. They were intimidated. They were in fear. They didn't... They didn't understand the power that they had in them. Listen, don't run from your fight. Face it. Right, Mark? We face our battle. We face the fight. We, we don't run from... We, you might whip me, but you're going to know I was at the party. <laughs> right. Amen? Amen? And even if they beat us, we still win. Because of whose we are. So in the midst of terrible persecution, they can have hope. You and I can have hope. We can know that salvation is ours. Listen, kill me. If, if you kill me, if you kill me graveyard dead, I still win because I'm, glory, I'm going to glory. People don't want to, they don't want to think about that kind of stuff. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die to get there. <laughs> Including me. I'd just as soon get raptured, wouldn't you? I mean, forget the whole death thing. Let's go, we gone. I think that's going to be really cool. I don't know what kind of a vaccine they're going to come up with for that, but anyway, um, let me just get back here here's a hard truth times of trial serve to sift true Christians from false or fair weather Christians that, that's, a, that, that's a hard truth it is a hard truth, and my job is to confront you with truth. And, and I'm not trying to bring any kind of condemnation. I'm just telling you, stand in the face of your enemy. You will never win a battle running from it. You will never win a battle running from it. You'll not even save yourself from, from pain by running from your battle. So when you are pressured to give up and turn your back on Christ, don't do it. Remember the benefits of standing firm and continuing to live for Christ. Standing firm to the very end is not a way to be saved, but the evidence that a person is really committed to Jesus. So persistence is not a means to earn salvation. It is a byproduct of a truly devoted life. So this perseverance will help us to do the will of God, and in the end, we will receive what He has promised. And just, a, listen, church, just around the bend, just, just, around, just a little bit further down the road, just a little further on, there's a, there's a staging area where there are angels standing ready, and Jesus Himself is posed for history's most marvelous day. It could be soon, and you and I could be a part of it. It'll be powerful, and you need not fear that day. And everything you venture today can be done in hope of it. It has to be coming because God promised it. Jesus' return is just ahead. Keep steadfast in your faith and achieve and active in your worship and your service for Him. God's very best still lies ahead, church. Because the life often... Uh, forks off in two different directions. You and I must make the choice to take the high road. If you by chance end up on the wrong road, the low road, can I just tell you, it is never too late to turn around. This road's going to get steep in some places. The climb takes a toll on your energy. It gets lonely in some places. There are not many on it, but more than you might have imagined. And some will be there because of your example. 
It gets slippery in some places. The devil blows ice on the narrow passages. But despite the danger, the high road is bound for the peak and you will make it. God has a lifeline around you. Remember what I said earlier. If you don't put forth the effort and the endurance to get to the top, you'll only live by what somebody else has told you is up there. You'll never experience it. When we're tempted to falter in our faith or to turn back from following Christ, we must keep focused on what He has done for you and what He offers you and I in the future. Let me close with this verse of Scripture. It says in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8, Finally. Finally. Remember the message title? Remember the message title? Long-term outlook? Finally. It's talking about the end. It's talking about a destination. It's talking about that great day. And finally, there is laid up. Not there might be, not that if everything goes right. There is. And finally, there is laid up for me a the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me. Say, give to me. Let me ask you this question. Do you believe this? Because you didn't say it like you believe it. Say, give to me. Amen. On that day, and oh, oh, and, and not to me only but also to all who have loved His appearing. That's us. That's you and I. That's the family. Listen, church, don't give up. Keep your eyes on the long-term outlook. Keep your eyes on the long-term outlook. Don't get weary in well-doing. Don't get discouraged in the battle. Don't give up in the middle of the fight. Don't stop in the middle of the climb. There's a view. There's a view from the top that is worth climbing for. There, there, There awaits you and I A place in heaven that is going to be worth the climb. Amen? Amen. There is laid up for me and for all who have loved His appearing. That's us. In glory. Father, I love You, Lord. I love You, Lord. I worship You, Lord. I give You praise, glory, and honor today, Lord, because You have given me this long-term outlook. It's deep inside of me. God, there have been so many times that I've wanted to throw in the towel and say, I've had enough, I'm done. But Lord, Your Spirit just continues to well up within me. Lord, I pray that You would use us today. I pray that You would use this message today. God, to minister to Your people, whether in this house or watching by way of the internet today, God, that you would use this word to provoke, that you would use it to to, to strengthen and to encourage those that may be going through a battle. Lord, maybe you're here, there are those here today that need you in their life, that have never accepted you as Lord and Savior. God, I pray today that by your spirit you would minister, that you would speak to them in that still small voice that says this is the way walk in it maybe they're thinking man I've just been too bad I've just been too bad I, there, there's be saved listen Paul said that he was the chiefest of all sinners and yet he wrote half or better than, of the entire New Testament God used him Listen, God's not done with you if you're still breathing, if you still have blood pumping through your body. 
God is not done with you. God has a purpose and He has a plan for your life. If you're here today and you say, Preacher, I've never accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. If you're watching today by way of the internet, I implore you, I beg you to write a note there on the, on the, on the Facebook page or whatever and say, Hey, I'm, I want to accept Jesus. If you'll pray this prayer with me in just a moment, if you'll pray this prayer, Right down on there. Just type it right in there. I prayed the prayer. I promise you, you'll be saved. It's just like being here. You can get saved anywhere. You don't have to be in a church to get saved. If you're in this house today and you say, Preacher, I, I need Jesus as my Lord. If you're here today and you want to make Him the Lord of your life, I'm going to just ask you right now to just raise your hand. Raise your hand. Say, yeah, that's me. I need Jesus. I've never accepted Him before, but today's my day. I'm going to accept Him as my Lord. If that's you, raise your hand. Anybody at all say, preacher, that's me. I need Jesus. I need Jesus. I need Jesus. I want to pray this sinner's prayer because I believe by faith that somebody on that, on that recording, on that video says, Preacher, I need Jesus today. Would you pray with me? Yes, I will pray with you. Just repeat after me. Say, Dear Lord, come into my heart. Change me. Forgive me. Restore unto me the joy of Thy salvation. Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me Lord I promise I'll serve you the rest of my days write my name in the Lamb's book of life thank you for saving me in Jesus name Amen if you prayed that prayer if you prayed that prayer today you're just as saved as anybody in the world so God today we love you we thank you for, a, for an outlook that we can look to. God, I pray that you would challenge your people. God, cause in us a passion and a desire to share the love of Jesus with our world, with our community, with our families. Because there's no way to heaven except through Jesus. So God, I thank you for that. I thank you for your people. I thank you for this day. I pray you are glorified in all of this today. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said amen, amen and amen. God bless you. God go with you. Thank you for joining us today by way of the internet. Hope you had a great day. Hope you'll come back on Wednesday. God bless you. Have a great day.